Hello and welcome to episode 13 of the Croydon Constitutionist podcast. We're here in the Woolpack in Banstead, uh, myself Mike Swaddling and Dan Heaton. And Dan, what are we drinking? We are drinking a very fine East Coast IPA. Now we've crossed the border from Croydon into uh, leafy Surrey because we hear of the machinations of the uh, the current council. We we feel feel we need feel we need to be safe here to do this because we're talking about the omni shambles that is Croydon Council. Um, you may have heard this week uh, stories of Joe Negrini, the chief executive of Croydon Council, who's paid more than the Prime Minister, has resigned from her job. Um, Croydon Council's facing possible bankruptcy, it's been reported in the BBC and the Financial Times. And generally, Croydon taxpayers and the, the users of really important services face some very, very tough times ahead. Dan, you got any thoughts about what's been going on in Croydon Council recently? Well, we've talked about this before on the podcast and indeed in many articles on our website. But yes, it, uh, it seems that the extremely overpaid uh, Chief Executive of Croydon Council, Jonah Greeny, has finally seen fit to leave her position, uh, leaving the, the, uh, the council with a £65 million overspend this year. But don't worry, because we have got £10 million of reserves. And this is a council that has invested its money in, in various shambolic ideas, such as shopping centres and indeed a... Um, a hotel that is now closed down and um, it's absolutely terrible and and the council taxpayer is going to be paying for this for some years to come um, only this week the council has said that it cannot um, rule out uh, issuing a section 114 notice which means that no, no basically only essential spending can be made the council of Croydon is basically about to go bankrupt that's the situation we are being left in by this Labour Council. Yeah, absolutely. And it's important. Now, that, uh, no doubt some people will try and blame the last chief executive. No doubt some people will blame the COVID situation. But we've been talking about this for years. Huge executive pay at Croydon Council. Pay for people literally defecating on stage. Uh, pay for all sorts of arts events that, that you know, are maybe fine, but, but aren't essential spending. Uh, as Dan's already mentioned, investing in investing in hotels that aren't open, uh, overspending on the Fairfield Halls, overspending on New Addington Leisure Centre, brick by brick that's not making any money, and spending capital reserves on revenue for years now, um, really is a, a sort of worrying time ahead for Croydon Council. The only thing we can say is at least uh, uh, the current problems will stop them hopefully coming up with too many bright ideas or so so we thought until they started uh, blockading the roads in parts of Croydon Dan you've you've seen this this week yeah so I don't know whether this is the current council or whether this is Sadiq Khan uh, as he is in charge of certain roads Um, but basically they seem to be creating all kinds of cycleways throughout central Croydon why? As if it's not, you know, as if you need any less incentive to come into Croydon Town Centre at the moment, with the shambles that is the the the, uh, the Whitgift Centre that hasn't been renovated into the the Westfield that we were told about, and the rest of the shops that you can't go into because they're either closed up now, such as Debenhams, or you can't go into without a muzzle on. This is absolutely ridiculous. We need to be encouraging people back into the town centre rather than discouraging them with these ridiculous rules around roads. Yeah, well, change is coming. We uh, we should see more from Democ uh, coming along. So that's the campaign for a democratically elected mayor of Croydon. We'll see change there. Um, of course, one of the great areas of worry is that, as Dan's mentioned, that the Labour Council's not really been good or up to it doing this. Of course, the Conservative councillors have voted for all of the same budgets for the past few years as the Labour councillors. They haven't set their stall out to be different. I think in many ways they would be different, um, but but they haven't voted that way, so they're not proving it. Someone in Croydon's desperately got to step up and, and save, you know, the town certainly I grew up in, and I'm sure many of us uh, where we live and uh, Marys feel great affection for. I don't know, Dan, any final thoughts uh, on, on what's next for Croydon? Well, assuming we manage to avoid bankruptcy, it's up to a, a new administration, whether that be a Conservative administration or whether it be a newly democratically elected mayor of Croydon to take an absolute grip on this situation. What they do about Westfield or whether they bother with Westfield or not, I don't know, but to actually get a grip of this town and to actually sort it out. We cannot keep spending so much money on wastefully 
because the, the taxpayers will not put up with it. The council cannot go bankrupt. This town is too big and too, actually, genuinely, it's too wealthy to go bankrupt. It's completely unnecessary and the town needs to be revived. The town centre and the rest of the town needs to be revived. It deserves it. The council taxpayers of Croydon deserve it and it's just not good enough at the moment. Got any thoughts on what's going on in Croydon Council? Get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you all.